Hi guys, I'm Larise. And I'm Blake. And we are Red Flags. Yeah, so um, Larise and I were talking this week and I sent her over this personality test by a site called 16personalities.com. Um, I don't know, had you ever taken that test before, by the way? I feel like you sent it to me before. We might have taken it back in the day. It's very familiar to me, but what it, I mean, it's so spot on and scary that it, it, it's like the test knows you better than you know yourself, is how I feel. So for anybody who doesn't know what this is, this is a test based on the longer Myers-Briggs test. And the Myers-Briggs test uh, outlines four different personality types, or uh, four main personality types, I believe. I could be totally wrong on that, but um, all these different personality types. And you, so you take this 15-minute test, and essentially it spits out this whole slew of information and tells you, um, basically, in our case, that you have a shit ton of red flags. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So... That's what we kind of just wanted to go over and talk about how you can use this personality test, and you guys can find this at 16personalities.com, and how you can use this personality test to really help you navigate your red flags, and maybe when you're dating somebody, even their red flags. Yeah. So send it to the person you're dating and, and figure them out, because it's, you, you learn so much. Do you, um, Larissa, do you think that would be weird before a first date? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like an eight minute test it's like, it's like <laughs> sending over like a package of like okay here you go here's the first date package you need to fill out your um personality profile i need your social security number i need like i'm i'm about to start doing that to make sure that i don't attract these red flags but to be honest if someone puts the work in then they're looking for something because that's the thing no one's going to do that unless they're like if they're looking for something like a fling they're not going to be doing an eight minute it's it wasn't eight minutes but it, it's a you know it takes it takes effort yeah no it definitely takes effort but i think that people would definitely consider us weirdos and we probably wouldn't even get a first date if that were the case so Guys, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go over um, my personality type. So they come out with. Um, essentially, it comes out and it spits out a four-letter acronym. So mine is INFJ, which stands for intuitive, um, introvert, intuitive, feeling, judging. So I'm judging now, basically. I'm a judger. Uh, let me read you a little bit about my personality type. So I am an INFJ. And the first thing that it mentions in my personality type is this personality type makes up less than 1% of the population. Okay. Right away. Less than right away. That, that, that flags me as a red flag. That's like, you are a crazy person. You're red flag. You're an outlier. So you're a crazy person. Red flag, ding, 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 ding. That's my first red flag right there. And, and I was kind of surprised by that because I don't feel like I am, but apparently it has something to do with you being super rational. My personality type is rational, but also emotional. So those two things don't typically like, you know, yeah. fit in the same category, either you're one or the other typically. It also says people with this personality type tend to see helping others as their purpose in life, okay? Anytime that you, <laughs> that your purpose in life is to help other people, you are going to attract red flags. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the, you know how it gives, so another thing that's really cool about this personality type indicator thing is that it gives you what what famous people or celebrity celebrities or people through history are your same personality type mother teresa is one of no, my <laughs> that's great though <laughs> wow okay wow mother teresa is one nelson mandela and malcolm x oh no 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 oh, not wow. malcolm x why did i say malcolm x malcolm x is not in that um martin well, luther one, king one percent is insane I thought mine was good. Mine was 4%. And yours like, is 1%. Wow. I know. I feel like they don't want to say it because they don't want to make you feel bad about yourself. But I feel like I might be a sociopath or something. I, I don't know. 
Okay, it also says, this is, this is the really telling one. This is really funny. Advocates can often be found engaging in rescue efforts and doing charity work. <laughs> yeah, and that's very true because I just happen to find charity cases in men <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you have, done, you have done your time. I specialize in that. Like, the fact that it's saying rescue efforts and charity work, like, I'm not even kidding. The last two guys that I dated didn't even have cars. We talked about that last time. They didn't have cars. So those two are like kind of starting off. Those are like two main red flags right there. Then the other cool thing that it does, so it goes through your profile and it will give you your strengths and your weaknesses. And then it'll also tell you like, you know, things about how you are in a relationship, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's nice, careers, all this. But I'm gonna focus next on my strengths and my weaknesses. So first, my strengths. And I also see these as red flags because, or maybe not red flags, but how they attract red flags. So the first strength is creative. And I would say my creativity is definitely in full effect when I creatively make up excuses for these guys who are like shitheads in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I can get really crap. I, I make the craziest excuses. I'm like, no, you know, he wants to be in an open relationship because he's just really free and he's like so forward thinking and he's cool and like, you know. Yeah, you're praising him for his faults. Exactly. He's, but it's like, you see the best in what he's, why he thinks the things he does and the things he does are for something greater than, you know, it's not even just like, oh, well, it's because he's having a bad day. It's like, oh no, it's because he's so in tune and he's so open. So that's a Mother Teresa thing. You're like giving all the love. Uh, giving all the love, all the acceptance. And, and like my strength says, I'm creative. And so I come up with all these creative excuses. Like I, I use my brain to come up with these excuses of why it's okay to accept these guys. That's my first strength that I think pulls in red flags. The second one is determined and passionate. So that's a strength. But in the dating world, that can actually be like a red flag magnet. Mm -hmm. Being determined and passionate, because this is what this means for me. And I don't know if you've realized this about yourself, but what this means for me, determined and passionate, when a guy doesn't want me, it you makes me want him more. even more. And that determination and that passion, it's like I become like a crazy person. Wow. So that starts with yeah. me being a red flag and then my red flags come out because my determination and passion just like cling me to this person yeah. who it shouldn't okay that's another one and then altruistic is another this is another strength but again we talked about that's that whole that's that whole mother teresa thing and you know what i looked up something on altruism so altruistic people actually attract narcissists did you know that Mm -mm. You're very altruistic too, so I don't know if that's in your strengths, but all, all, altruistic, altruistic people attract narcissists, which explains like 90% of the people I date. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We also live in Los Angeles where there is 90% of the people are narcissists. <laughs> Yeah, probably including us to a certain extent. Like, you have to be kind of self-promoting. Like, not totally, but... Yeah. I mean, come on. We're not, we're not even showing our faces. That's true. But typically, in everyday life, we would be. We would be like, hey. <laughs> that was okay, and then I have two weaknesses. Um, the first one... And this is a red this this is a red flag for me. This this causes me to be a red flag for other people. So perfectionistic. Um, that means that I'm always looking for the next best thing, and I can never never settle on like one person. Every time a person comes along, and this is so me. This is so totally me. Every time somebody comes along, then I start thinking about like how somebody else could be better. Wow. It's really bad. Like, I'm trying to be really did honest you, with myself. Did you know that one before you took the test, or was that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been a perfectionist ever since I was, I mean, it makes my life hard in a lot of ways, but especially dating, hmm. um, because I have, like, especially around myself, I expect perfectionism, and when you expect for perfectionism 
from yourself, you tend to expect it from other people too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what happens there. And then the second weakness that I have, and this is really coming into play during this pandemic. I um, am, it says my weakness is I'm extremely private. Mm -hmm. And in certain extents I'm not, and, and, and sometimes I am, but it keeps me from really showing somebody who I truly am. I put like my best face forward and it's almost like, you know, I don't let them see who I really am until I trust them. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a red flag because somebody could be dating me and then six months down the line, I'm like, okay, but this well, is who I really am. Me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, surprise, the mask is off. This is who I really am. Yeah. Huh. So, the, the mask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hence the mask. Yeah. So, wow, it's um, like metaphoric. Is that exactly. It's, seriously, it really is metaphoric. Yeah, I mean, and that one I didn't really know. I would never have thought that about myself until I realized, like, during this pandemic, partially because my roommate's being creepy, but um, I, I like have been hiding in my room the whole time. Mm hmm. I live in a 2,000 square foot place and I'm hiding in my Wow, room. wow. Because I'm that private. I just want like alone time. It's very strange. Yeah. I'm How do you do that and be in a relationship? Like if I wanted to be in a relationship, how do you do that? It's hard and it takes, that means that your relationships take so long to get to a actual serious place. So it's like you're, it's kind of like people are, 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 are usually upfront, I would assume, or and you kind of get to know whether you want to be with them or not, but you're not letting that person, you're not even being comfortable enough to let them in to know if you want them. Very true. Yep. It's a very true. You're, you're, they're not seeing who, who you really are. Like how can yeah. you ever get to anything if nobody sees who you really are, you know, like, yeah. and then, yeah, it's, it's not good. So <laughs> those are my red flags. What about yours? Like what, what, what do you consider on your personality profile, either attract red flags or red flags that you give off? Okay. Well, and tell I'll, us about, and tell us what your personality profile is first and a little bit about it. Okay. I'm going to look at my thing because I didn't even realize the actual like letters. I didn't even think that far ahead. So red flag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I while you're talking, I was like, what does all this shit mean? Okay. Um, so my, I'm I N F P A and I know that a means assertive. I N what? I N F P. Okay. So we're just one letter off. So what is the, the P is, and I know it's an assertive mediator and I'm a diplomat. No, it, your, yours is introvert. Introvert, for sure. Intuitive. Intuitive. Feeling. Feeling. And then the P is, uh, I think in, it's judging and perceiving, and I think you're perceiving. Huh, that one doesn't seem, doesn't, I mean, let me look. I, it doesn't seem like I, doesn't seem like I recognize that. But let me see. Oh, let me see. It does show you here. It's, I can't believe I didn't. When you were saying that, I was like, shit, I didn't know that it was a. Oh, uh, you're the same as Audrey Hepburn. Did you know that? I think so, yeah. Yeah, you are. Let's see. Oh, shoot. Wow, we're already at 12 minutes. <laughs> okay, so basically, I'm just going to go into it. So my INFPA is. I'm like you said, I am also too altruistic. And um, let's see, it, it says that you try to push, you commit to one person, and then, sorry, I gotta read this person. And you like give yourself too much, and then you forget about people in your life and yourself, which I didn't realize that I did. Wait, you give yourself too much to relationships? To the person. Like, I don't oh, give myself person. to okay, a lot okay, of okay. people. There's only a select amount of people that I give my energy to. And when I really do, like, when I start dating someone, I put a lot of energy into them. And I feel like 
I care so much about that person that I care less about myself is really what it is. Really? Okay. Which I think is a red, I don't know if that's a red flag. That's probably a good flag for someone who's dating me. But like for myself, like I never saw myself as someone that lost who I am when I'm with someone. But I know that when I am with someone, I'm so focused on them that like I kind of just lose like nothing else matters in the moment that I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I get like that. If I'm really into somebody, I get like that too. And I don't think it's necessarily healthy. I think it's healthy to have a balance, but it's weird because I do feel like I have my own life and I'm not someone that like, once I am dating them, I stop my life, but I just know that when I'm with them, especially, or I do, I mean, yeah, maybe I do. Maybe I do put them first, but I still keep my life. I don't know. What do you think as my friend? I don't know. I, I think you do a good job about doing both. Yeah. I think you do a great job about doing both. You like, you know, obviously we haven't, uh, our schedules like are so different anyway that it's tough. So, I mean, I think we could definitely be better about it, but we pick up where we leave off when we connect. I think you and I though. We're similar are, in that way. I, I, I use a lot of time. I mean, because we're introverts, this is the thing. Well, introverts over extroverts and and i'm sure a lot of people know this introverts need time to themselves to recover yeah. like in, introverts that's how they regain their en energy if you're an extrovert you regain energy by going out and being around people to yes. us like we're probably extroverted introverts which me which means like yeah we can do it for a certain amount of time but for the most part like you know even in this quarantine i'm kind of enjoying it I kind of like being by myself. I'm not going to lie. I'm loving this. But you yeah. know what's weird is I talked to someone on the phone today that I hadn't spoken to in a long time. And he is someone that I knew from like going out all the time. And the thing is, is I was, I'm definitely someone that's always out. So it's weird to be an introvert that's always out. And, but the thing is, I spend like all day long by myself, not talking to anyone, happy in my own company. And I go out, but I'm not like the life of the party. I'm like sitting in like a corner or I'm kind of just chilling. Like I'm not that, I, I'm, I'm not that person, but I do enjoy being out. But yeah, you're, yeah I, I get it. I'm the same way. Like I enjoy being out and I enjoy feeding off people's energy, but I'm not going to be the one in the corner. Although sometimes when we're together, we're like that. Like almost like we feed off each other's energy where we can be like, you and I can get a little crazy together, but solo, I'm not, I would not be the one who's like commanding attention. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think it's because we're so similar in this that like, I do feel like we can do that and just have fun with each other. Because, because we feel, com yeah, we feel comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So my next one is, it said that you're not in a rush and I'm not being like specific, but I, it says you're not in a rush to commit. Which means you're always, you're prospect, you're a prospecting type. So you're either looking to establish a new relationship or improve your existing relationship. So you're always trying to make sure, is this, are we compatible? Are we compatible? Are we compatible? So like, even though like, I do feel like I want a relationship, it's like, you're kind of similar to yours where I'm like, oh, but like we have to be better or we're, we have to get to that next level. We're never there. And right. I do you're never that. like settled in like, okay, never this settled, is like never. what I want to do. You're always like, hey, this can be better. You might have, does your profile have a little bit of perfectionism in it? Oh, or well, no? what it is, is I'm an idealist who is always looking at things as in like, um, always well, oh no, this is different. This is different. I'm going to change that. But I'm like, I live in a fantasy world where I'm a fan. I like, I basically, everything is so magical. And my, everything that I look for is like a fairy tale that I'm always disappointed. So nothing's ever going to be what I expect it to be, which leads into, which I'm going to have to find. Um, and I'm probably just going to go from the top of my head but it's, let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. I'm idealistic. I'm too idealistic. So as a mediator, 
you not only idealize your partner, but you idolize them. Ooh, Which, idolize, that's a red flag. Like, anytime you idolize someone, that's not good. And then you forget. But then you're seeing them from a place that's not their true self. You're like, you're imposing what your thoughts are on them. Like, what you want them to be, you're finding that in them. No, and you forget, and this is what it said, is like, you forget that no one's perfect. And I know in my relationships is the people that I'm attracted to, they are always people that I idolize, and most of the guys that I've dated. And it's always been because they're doing the job that I want. They have the career, they have the, the power, they have like all these things as like who I am and what I want in my life. It's like I end up idolizing them, you know, like when I first, I don't, it, it, it's, it's not good. And I put them on a pedestal. Yeah, that's what, that's what I, yeah. When you idolize people, you put them on a pedestal, which I do. is not healthy. I always do that. And I feel like, I mean, I kind of feel like I stepped away that. I don't feel like that's something that I feel like in my relationship now. But I, all the men that I've been so in love with have, it's been that dynamic. And that's such a horrible dynamic to be like, you're amazing. You're wonderful. You're this. And then I'm like, shrinking i'm not like i feel maybe my insecurity i don't know it's a horrible thing but red flag red flag um another thing is i read into everything so it's like i'm super super sensitive and my imagination is crazy so like any little thing i look into and it's like everything is up bigger than it is and i cannot let go of that and that's definitely in my life now like something small that my boyfriend can say about, oh, I saw this on Facebook, this girl that I dated, and I can't get that out of my head, out of my head, out of my head, or like little things, and I'm like, I can't let things go. That's called, that's called rumination. So rumination is when you sit and you just let something like stew in your head. So unhealthy. Um, and I do it too. I, that's part of the reason why sometimes I prefer being single, because it's like, I can't fucking stand, like, the shit that goes on in my head. You're not yeah. stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think, and I, oh, you know what, too, is, um, oh, this is something that I do all the time, um, and I kind of think kind of goes relate to what you're saying, being, like, a private person, but it says that I will always need to disappear for a while. Like, removing myself from others to recenter my own mind and my feelings. Yeah, that's and, the introvert in you. And it says that I always emerge from it coming with some kind of like decision, this huge decision that even my the closest people to me have no idea that I was even going through something. So it's like, and I do this all the time. Like I have distanced myself from a, like all the time because I, I, I don't feel good with myself and our, or I'm going I've to seen you go through that before there was yeah I've totally seen don't you remember I I was like yeah, I didn't you know what you were going through I was like I think she doesn't like me anymore no I just I go through these weird moments and I I hate it and I feel so bad because I'm like I don't want anyone to think it is like them but like I like even with my family like I'm going through a lot of family stuff and like I just kind of remove myself I remove remo 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 myself from everyone and I like I feel like I'm supposed to be like this happy person and this is what people expect of me and I can't be that and all the time and you wear your emotions on your sleeve that's yeah. not so much of a red flag though I mean but it, it is because I have dated people and when I feel like, even in a moment of, if something is going on in my life and I need space, or even if I, something that they did bothered me and I don't think it's big enough to talk about, like, I kind of, like, pull away, but I pull in a way, in a way where it's like, oh, I feel, they, they think I'm ghosting them. Yeah, they don't know what's going on. And yeah. I do feel like one of the relationships that I was in when I was like telling them I wanted to be in a relationship with them, he had told me, he goes, I don't know. I don't feel safe with you. You're so hot and cold. Like you're, you distance yourself for three weeks. And then all of a sudden you're like, so loving. And then you're this, and then you put like, and I get that, but it's like, people are not going to give you a chance. Even if like, they don't, if you can't communicate with that, with them, 
that's going to be a red flag to them that they're going to think like, well, this person doesn't care about me, but it's not that because I don't know them well enough to share that with them or to feel like, and I didn't even know that I was doing it or even until I like looked at this personality test is when I realized, oh, I do this all the time. Yeah. That's why these, uh, that, that's why these personality tests can be helpful. It's like, you can realize what you're doing and, and what your weaknesses are and what, and, and sometimes, you know, your weaknesses and, and honestly what you do, because, you know, we participate in like bringing these people into our lives. There's ways that we, par it's not just like, oh, poor us, we're the victims. Like we attract red flags. That's what we talked about. We attract red flags because we are red flags. We don't have boundaries. We don't have that. That's why I'm saying I totally think like as we're trying to like go through this journey, which I know like a lot of Americans and just people around the world are trying to do because dating's crazy as hell right now. Like I think things like this and getting to know yourself and self like realization and, and self exploration. I think it can help. Like I can, I honestly think it, the more you know yourself, the easier it's going to be to ease into being yourself and then also know what you're doing to like allow things around you to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. No, definitely. No, it's definitely an amazing, I, I mean, it's weird and it's weird that we don't all just have taken this way earlier in our life, but it's super cool. And if you haven't done it, you should do it. Um, but that's what I learned from it. I'm going to like keep continuing to learn about it because well, there's like a 250 page, like whole book thing you can order for $30 that gives you an in-depth personality profile. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. the scary thing is it's like so spot on. Like mine were so spot on that it creeped me out a little bit because it takes 15 minutes. You guys, this test literally takes 15 minutes. I feel like when I looked at it and I'm reading it, it was like I have been in denial my whole life and I haven't taken response. Like, I don't, I don't know. Or like, I didn't, I was ignoring what I was doing because, and then I'm reading it and I'm like, oh no, this is what I'm doing. But it's like, you'll never, I don't know. It, it's weird. You it's cold. You were just not awake. You know, when people say, oh, I'm woke, being woke <laughs> is being living a conscious life, which means consciously knowing what your actions do to create other actions. It's, it's being conscious about your subconscious. Like it's, it's marrying those two things together. So that's what it is. Like, it's almost like you wake up from amnesia, but it's not amnesia. It's you actually doing the self work to know what the hell, you know, what's going on around you. And also too, it's like, as it sounds so negative, it's very positive as well. And it tells you things about yourself that it also builds your confidence in a way where there's things that you didn't even know that you were like, Oh, I am that way. And I, I you know, I am. Oh, for sure. So yeah. it's it great. A lot of great things. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that's, I think we've talked, what was yours again? I N F J. Okay, mine was I N F P A. Um, well, mine's I N F J T, but I don't, Oh, oh, it's because I'm a turbulent ab advocate. Mm. I'm an advocate for people, but in a turbulent way, whatever the hell that means. But cool. whatever. I mean, either way, you guys should go check it out. Check it out. Get to know yourself. Join us on this uh, journey of, like, self-exploration and, and healing, I guess, and try and get to know yourself so you can figure shit out. Yes. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, Till next time. Till next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.